Uh, they right. didn't pronounce Coleman very good. All right, sir. Tell us about the, your book. Uh, this is a book. I think it was my third or fourth book. The name, The Noble Experiment of Warren C. Coleman by J.K. Rouse. It was published by the Crab Cree Press in Charlotte. And um, Who was Mr. Coleman? Mr. Coleman was a, a black man who uh, was a slave, and but later on got his freedom, and that he become very successful. He went to Howard University in Washington, D.C. a year. He was a shrewd businessman. He sold real estate in Concord and Cabarrus County. He promoted, uh, lent money to the, the black churches in Cabarrus County, uh, quite a bit of money. And he uh, also promoted uh, 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 Livingston College. And uh, he would uh, run a store right in the center of Concord. And the people came from all over the county to do business with him. And uh, one old fella came there that run a harness shop over near Mount Pleasant. He said he always come in to see Mr. Warren C. Coleman to hear his jokes and to listen to his keen business sense. And said Mr. Coleman was such a smart man that he could climb up a tree naked and come down with a good suit of clothes on. So that describes Mr. Warren C. Coleman best I know. He uh, was a shrewd man. Tell us about his work with the cotton mill, <clears throat> though. Well, all I know about 19, and I think it was uh, uh, in the last century, about 19 and, uh, uh, I mean, uh, it would be, be, be 1898, uh, he decided that uh, he would build a cotton mill to employ only colored help. And where she did, he had some help from up north. And, but he created this mill, sold stock, and he had the backing of, uh, of Duke University, the people that organized Duke University, some of that group. And so he operated the mill and did a, a pretty good job until his death. Then uh, when he died, he didn't have a will, so his property was sold by the Means family in Concord, and it was just put on the market all at once and didn't get the proper value. He's buried over there at the old uh, uh, Brown Mill Cemetery for the colored people. What happened to that mill? Oh, my, uh, Mr. J uh, William, uh, J William Cannon, Mr. Cannon, J.W. Cannon, bought that mill after it was closed down at a public sale. That's where Cannon got it. Bought it did, but at the time being, he worked more or less with the Cannon influence, you know, I think, but he had backing all over America. Now, did, when Cannon bought it, did uh, the college continue to work in the mill? Ah, they, yeah, oh yeah, I got a picture here. Yeah, it's, yeah, I got the picture here where it was strictly called, because it, it was a colored mill. They worked a lot of everywhere. They still, I guess they weren't still working on colored people. I got the deed in here, in this book. Now, we understand that we, from everywhere we've been, that only in terms of, of uh, blacks, they only worked in the yard or they worked in the, the picker room, but I mean, the, the <coughs> breaking out room, but they couldn't work anywhere else in the mill. And this is the first time we've heard about uh, uh, colored people working anywhere else in the mill. Well, in my mind, in this particular Warren Coleman, I'd say they worked anywhere they wanted to. Uh, he had, he'd, he'd bring in expert supervisors, quite a few from up north and anywhere else he'd get, but uh, he, I wouldn't say they, they, would, they didn't work anywhere they wanted to work. There's pictures in this book. You must read this book, which is a rare book now, to get your opinion on Warren C. Coleman. Now, finally, could you tell us Looking back, way back to the 1920s, could you describe the, the change you see, the difference between uh, this community now and when you first came here? Well, that 
would be very difficult for me to try to describe. I've lived here for 70 some years, but uh, all I know I, is uh, the, that period of 1921, they only paid $2 an hour for, $2 a day for wages, and the wages were low. But as time has come, they increased all along. So I, I wouldn't be critical of, uh, of that. I just, uh, it seemed like the events or the conditions of the country has went from $2 on up to the present level. Mr. Wingett will be glad to give you that. From your perspective, we'll ask him in just a minute, <coughs> what, is, what do you say is the big difference in terms of living in this town now? Well, uh, I'll tell you the truth, there's always been a group here that worked in Cannon Mills but owned their own property. And I have to be one that I own my own property uh, uh, 25, 30, 30 some years ago. So I went ahead and bought property outside of Cannon Mills, but uh, there was no conflict. You buy anywhere you want to. Mr. Cannon didn't try to tell you where to buy land. So I, I bought land and I've always lived in my own home here. I've been here 25 years. So uh, I'm in, I'm from Davy County, which is very independent people. And we don't ta take anything from anybody. <laughs> That's about it. Well, I've, I know how the people from Yadkin and Forsyth Well, County well, are. we are Davy the same way. Oh, well, under the present time, I don't know. So we just, we do what, we may listen, but we don't take the, the point of view. That's about all I know to tell you. Let Mr. Winger do Okay. Something. Thank you very much. And, uh, he has to speak. Okay. All right, sir. Could you tell me what this town looked like uh, when you first came here and tell me when you came here? I, I first came to Kanapas in 1934. I was fresh out of school and came to help the publisher of a newspaper who wanted to go back to college. And I was to take his place for a few months. Uh, Main Street was, uh, was the only business section we had, just a few stores, uh, none of them very pretty. Uh, the residential section extended up to the Baptist Church, which was was there then and still there. How many people in the mill at that time? I'm not sure how many, just how many people were in the mill at that time. Uh, uh, as well as I remember, uh, in, they employed about eight or nine thousand in uh, in the chain. The the Canapas is the headquarters for the Cannon Chain, and they have mills in uh, other towns surrounding here, and, and uh, a couple of mills in South Carolina at that time. Well, that was a pretty exciting year. Could you talk about that year at Canapolis? Well, did, did I say 34? I'm, I'm in 35. Okay. I, I came here right after the... Uh, the, the big union push in the textile industry. In fact, I was in the National Guard at that time and was on strike duty at uh, uh, Shelby and Kings Mountain uh, before I came up here. I got the, in fact, I got the call from Mr. Brody Griffin and Charlotte that they needed somebody up here and, and he got me out of the Guard a few days early so I could come to work. Could you tell us about being in the guard on that duty? It was, <clears throat> it, it was nasty. That was the, the, the guard duty. The, the guard, the guard uh, duty at, at that time was, uh, it was pretty, it was tense. The, uh, th that had some trouble at a strike in uh, Gastonia. The, the police chief had been killed and some other people hurt and and uh, there was a lot of ill feeling that's the reason the National Guard was there and uh, uh, one reason I don't care okay, to I will. I'm a slow talker anyway all right so could you tell us about being at say well I was in the National Guard and then go ahead from there 
and give us dates, okay? I, I was in the National Guard in uh, 1934, and my unit happened to be called for, for strike duty because of troubles they were having in uh, uh, Gastonia and Shelby and Kings Mountain in that area. Uh, we were assigned to, to Shelby. My, uh, the, the, we were heckled and spit on and had rocks thrown at us and things like that in the, in the course of, of looking at after the uh, trying to preserve order. The, the, the mill companies, the unions that there were on strike at that time. Uh, they tell me that, that those, the, the Union sent what they call flying squadrons into towns like Kannapolis and other places that were not unionized and uh, an effort to get, to, to get more members, of course. Uh, in uh, Kannapolis, I was told, the, there was one company of National Guard people were, were brought in. They deputized a, a lot of other people for uh, special guard duty, and the so-called flying squadrons uh, came through Kannapolis, but uh, none of them ever stopped. <laughs> so that uh, uh, Kannapolis was not organized at that time, and, and continued to work what, what work there was. The, the, the cannon people tried to, tried to work uh, even during the Depression. Uh, they warehoused a lot of, lot of goods just to give people one or two days a week work, uh, even when the materials weren't selling. We've heard a lot about that, and so we'd like to get a little, <coughs> just a tight thing, just say, well, well, Mr. Cannon spread out the work when the, when the, the mills had to go short time. If, could you tell about that? Yeah, during the, during the Depression, and there wasn't much work available, and Mr. Cannon uh, spread out the uh, uh, work to give people a few days' work a week uh, rather, rather than, uh, than not having any income at all. Now, could you go, uh, just remember when you were in, you were in Shelby, did you say, on the National Guard duty? Uh, I was in Shelby in a short time in Kings Mountain, yes, sir. And while I was on strike duty. Could you tell us any more about that? What, what are your memories of it? Uh, of the, my, my memories of the strike duty are, are Kind of, kind of jumbled. First place, uh, I didn't want to go, but but I didn't have a job either. And when I got out of college, and uh, some of my, me and some of my friends friends joined the guard just to get a few dollars, and uh, uh, we were we were not military people. We just wore the uniform and. Uh, uh, we were assigned to various places to, to keep order, they, uh, they said. I remember the, the main incident sticks out in my mind is there was a, uh, a rumor came that they were gonna, the Union people were going to attack a mill in uh, the outskirts of Shelby, and we were assigned to guard the, uh, a portion of that, that mill. Our, our unit was lined up on one side of the road uh, with rifles that had no ammunition, and the, the uh, Union people and the agitators paraded down the other side of the road, and they, they of course, called us a lot of a lot of bad names and uh, uh, threw rocks and spit, and but they, they didn't. Uh, there was no actual conflict, uh, no. At, at that particular time. Could you describe, I understand that there were a lot of women in that, uh, in, in, among the, the protesters. Could you talk about that? Well, uh, it, it, 
one, one thing I, I noticed that, that apparently there were about half the crowd was women. I would I would say I'm guessing. I didn't uh, I didn't pay much attention to that angle of it. Now we have some pictures from Shelby and two or three other places. We unfortunately I don't have them with me of these uh, young women talking with the troops. And yet we've had some other people say we had orders not to do it. Could you talk about that? Well, as, as far as uh, the, the troops and uh, civilians there fraternizing, uh, it was uh, it was not it was ordered not to be done, but it was done. Uh, I personally wasn't so lucky. <laughs> That's great, because we can cut right to you to a National Guardsman holding a picture of his wife. He got, he married right out of that, from Coolidge. Well, I wasn't married at that time. So. <laughs> oh, that, that's he, good, good stuff. Oh, yes. Uh, now, tell us about the kind of tenor of the time uh, of the town when you came in after that here in 35. When I came to Kannapolis, uh, uh, of course, I was, I was a stranger, and I didn't... Uh, uh, didn't know, I knew very, very few people. The main topic of conversation at that time was the, the uh, textile strike and the effort to unionize Kannapolis, the cannon mills. Uh, and But in my group, the, the most of the conversation uh, centered around uh, the funny things that happened. Uh, one of our, uh, the guard people, for instance, was was guarding a water tower at Plant Four, and it got. Uh, he heard a noise and got excited and let off, fired off a shot, and he hit the water tower. So, they there that messed up their sleeping plans for the night. I'm gonna have to sir. Could you tell us about the training you got for that strike duty? <coughs> well, as far as training uh, for strike duty goes, uh, we weren't trained for strike duty. We were, we were in, uh, uh, I was in a, an engineering unit and uh, we received a standard uh, army training. Uh, which didn't did not include uh, crowd control or anything. Uh, uh, only instruction we got was uh, when we got an assignment. The off our officers told us where to go and what to do when we got there. Uh, we were uh, in instructed. Uh, we, we we were not issued ammunition, and and we were instructed not to answer any. Uh, insults or anything that was thrown at us during during the time. That must have been hard. just just to make a show was was our was our duty, unspoken duty. I think was to show the uniform. Did you ever meet any of the <coughs> of the, the mill management people or the the sheriffs or all of that? Were you making common cause with them, or the, was the guard separate? Well, I was a private, so I didn't I didn't have uh, contact with the, with any of the uh, civilian bosses or or uh, or law enforcement people, not not directly. Now you used the term deputized, I think, before. Uh, could you talk about the, that activity? Well, the the. Sheriff's Department in uh, in Cabarrus County was also the the law enforcement agent for Kannapolis. Kannapolis was unincorporated, and the sheriff's office took care of the law enforcement in this area. Uh, the The main main thing that the mill wanted, from what I hear, was uh, the to 
keep order and to protect their property. And uh, the, the sheriff uh, deputized a large number of people uh, just uh, to act during that, that period. They, they directed traffic and, and uh, kept people moving and uh, things like that. They were not armed, as, so far as I know. And you didn't see them being armed? No, I, I wasn't here. Yeah. This, well, here what, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. What, what I'm telling you about the 1934 I, things were is hearsay. I yeah, was not yeah, here. I understand. Yeah. Now, one, two other things. One, in all of the movies we've seen, uh, the almost all of them, the National Guard has their their rifles with the bayonets on them. Could you explain that? Uh, uh, I don't. I don't remember whether whether our unit uh, used bayonets or not. Uh, I know we didn't use them. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that we that we put them on our, on our rifles. I, I just can't. Yeah. I don't remember that detail. The reason the stop just one thing. The reason I'm asking that because, I mean, most of the time you were where you were. It was peaceful. And so forth. If you you could tell about that, so it. We're not recording now. Huh? No, we we can hold it. Those big fights. All right, sir. Well, about the uh, the what I call strike duty. It was really a lot of. Uh, a lot of waiting and very little action, if you, if you can call uh, what we did uh, action. Uh, mo most of our time was spent uh, playing poker or, or doing routine guard duty on our, uh, uh, at our own uh, encampment. At one time we were camped in a, a school building and uh, I remember one night I was on I was on guard duty and uh, uh, it was three hours on and one off or something like that and uh, all of us who were off were playing poker and so we played played poker all night. <laughs> but it was and it was mostly something like that and just just being there was the was was uh, boring and. Uh, we kept waiting for something to happen, and nothing, nothing ever happened. The biggest thing that happened was uh, to us was the march down by the mill, and we were uh, armed spectators. Do you remember uh, the name Paul Christopher? No, I don't. No I don't reason why you should. <laughs> he was. He just happened to be the, the a big leader of. Of the of the Union in uh, Shelby, uh -huh. and I just wondered if you happened to know him. No. No. Okay. Right. Okay. Finally, could you tell us something about the nature of the town when you came here? I mean, if it was a company town, it was, a, and then compare it with, <coughs> with with now. I know that's a big jump, but when you came here, it was had one kind of feeling. Now it has another kind of feeling. That's the thing we want to get. And you, as a, mm -hmm. as a newspaper, you might identify yourself as an as your what you you retired newspaper editor, so that we know what that opinion is coming from. For example, let's say, well, right, let's try it. All right, sir. Okay. Well, as far as change goes in in Canapolis, uh, it it came. I, I watched it all, of course, as a newspaper man. But it was it came so gradually that it's hard to make a hard to make a contrast. At the uh, when I first came here, it was a the town. Of course, was a lot smaller than it is now. The only the main dwellings were owned by the uh, Cannon Company and rented to the uh, workers. Uh, the The business section consisted of four or five. Uh, 
stores on Main Street. Um, now the business section is four or five streets, when and uh, one including one shopping uh, mall. Uh, the they're actually now they're actually more houses owned by the occupants than they are uh, rental housing uh, owned by anybody here, uh, which was a complete changeover. The, uh, when I came, the wa uh, sanitary facilities, uh, sewer and water supplies were furnished by Cannon Mills, uh, part uh, and, and only to Cannon Mills houses. Uh, that is that has uh, been changed. Was changed when the Canapa Sanitary District went into came into being. It uh, it was it, at the time it was set up. It was the largest uh, sanitary district in the east of the Mississippi, serving about twenty thousand people. Uh, that was the really I guess you could say the first step toward incorporation of the town. It was, the town was not incorporated, but the sanitary district uh, served that uh, purpose, uh, at least for sanitary reasons. Uh, attitudes have changed. It was, when I came, it was strictly a, a, a democratic town. Uh, everybody belonged to the Democrat Party. Uh, now it's gone Republican for the last uh, four or five elections, much to my regret. <laughs> Can I get that in there? Yeah, yeah. And uh, we now have a Chamber of Commerce. When I first came here and for Many many years afterward, there were no, was no chamber of commerce. the The newspaper got all the chamber of commerce type inquiries and requests, and speaking of that, that we that were interviewing a man. I just couldn't put that together. Could you talk about that? I, I I've heard people say that that. Uh, Cannon uh, discouraged other industries from coming in, um, but I, I don't know what he did. To I, and I never saw any overt actions that would that would have indicated that he was doing that. I think if I was in his position, uh, I wouldn't encourage somebody to come in and uh, dilute my labor force. But I, 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 I do not know his, uh, his attitude, and I saw no overt actions that would indicate he uh, actively fought it. Uh, finally, did, did the Cannon Company control the media here? Uh, no, no. Uh, I, I was personally... Could, could you put that in a complete sentence? <coughs> Cannon Company did not. Uh, the, the Cannon Company did not control the media here. Uh, for a long time, there was no media except the newspaper. Now, now there are uh, ha three or four newspapers and and uh, at least two radio stations uh, here. <clears throat> I was personally acquainted with Mr. Charles Cannon. I didn't know. Uh, J. W. His father, but uh, Mr. Cannon was was very opinionated, if that's the that's the word, and he stuck uh, uh, stuck by his beliefs. But he he never he never once uh, told me what to what to put in the paper or. or uh, or what not to put in the paper. In fact, my <laughs> uh, 
I, I, I did not come here as publisher of the paper. I came here as an employee and remained an employee. Uh, but the, the man who published it, James L. Moore, uh, is, was the owner, and we were very close. <coughs> uh, and one time there was a, a, a movement to, to there was a, a, move, a movement to rebuild the, the Cabarrus County Courthouse. This was many, many years ago, and uh, uh, the the Independent, our, our paper, uh, jumped uh, jumped into that by saying that 